So you're here to talk or to listen about styles, which is a great feature of writer. And um, most of you may know reports. Um, these are from from our support platform, ask.liberoffice.org. Uh, people who ask about styles, how to apply, how uh, to work with it, why is my style not... Um, um, not effective anymore, what can I do to copy and paste, um, problems, issues with understanding, there are millions. Because, of course, writer is used in a, in a, in a um, broad uh, um, uh, area and many people from the very beginner up to the experts are using it and everyone is recommended to use styles and that's what we propagate we try to educate people to use styles but in the end they struggle with it they struggle with the understanding we can of course they it is a question of documentation it's a question a matter of learning and you have to uh, make yourself familiar with software to use it but on the other hand it is also um difficult situation. Reason here, why people, um, or one reason why people don't understand is that the styles uh, have some kind of hierarchy. You can define a paragraph style with a yellow background, a character style with black, red background, and put that on your text and add a direct formatting and you get a completely different color. If this happens, people are Confused, of course. So, what does it mean? We need a couple of requirements. How can we deal with it beyond good documentation, beyond education? One is, um, we take uh, Baxilla, uh, the, the request from user, as a basis for what, uh, the, uh, what we need in the program. And one request that it's worth uh, to discuss is a display of inherited uh, attributes. Uh, if you use a style and, uh, inherit from a parent, then you get different attributes and that has to be displayed in a proper way. I don't go through all the, uh, um, the text. It's not so important. I just want to show that we have many tickets, many requests, enhancement requests, what to do the um, identification, what is effective right now, is an important uh, feature. Also, the um, um, removal, if the style gets um, changes to the parent, you cannot remove any change. You, you just add on top more. If uh, you use a certain font in the derived style, it is, of course, different, but setting it back to the uh, style from the parent does not unset this property, this attribute. So if the parent changes, the changed one in the uh, children will remain there. We need something to delete it, and the last one here is uh, nesting character styles that adds a little bit more complexity to the situation. Right now, you can have one character style and apply a character style to the text, like, say, emphasize to make the, the text in italic. The format uh, allows to have more than one character styles. The request here, called nested character style, means more than one multiple character styles, so you can have a bold, italic, and underlined, um, all three different character styles to one part of the text. Putting all these together, in a nutshell, we have two requirements. Eve wants to get an overview of the formattings to understand the actual layout. Eve is our persona for the advanced user. And Eve wants to remove individual properties. That's all. Pretty simple. What can we do? Actually, we have some, something like this. 
the paragraph style has uh, in the organizer tab and um, section what uh, mm, formatting this style contains in uh, relation to the parent. Here in this case, text body, it is yellow and something else is set. And at this position, we can solve the removal problem easily. We can click on the X here at the, at the text to remove the, um, the, remove the attribute. It is just one part of the game. I will not talk further about removal, but the idea here is taken into the um, actual proposal. It is a new deck that we could introduce, should introduce, a deck at uh, the sidebar that lists all the um, styles in the tree. And starting with uh, the, the topmost style, and of course default, um, it would show only those attributes from the, par from the parent that have changed. There shouldn't be too many. In this case, uh, font name, identification, alignment, and so on. To uh, avoid too uh, many information on one side, but suggest to collapse uh, starting with a certain number, that means default with no parents would have all the, um, the, the attributes a style have listed, hundreds, or maybe not hundreds, but a, a lot. It is collapsed all the time, as shown here, but you can open it. In this case, the user has derived another style from text body using at this particular situation. It is uh, with a font size and 12 and the language in French. So it's a French guy writing a thesis based on the text body. Makes quite sense. The goal is to see clearly what is applied. And it happens that you uh, define an attribute in one part of the game in the paragraph style here, text body, and override it with some other feature that you have. Font name, for example, is overwritten by the font name. And to cover this, the suggestion is to gray out those attributes that are changed in relation to the parent, so they have to get listed, but they are not they do not apply to the current selection. The sidebar shows the situation at the, uh, at the cursor, so what is being focused is listed here. Uh, yeah. And under character style, it's um, uh, shown the example with uh, multiple character styles. In this case, Emphasize and strong emphasize is applied to the text, and you get more than one um, entry in the list. I think it's pretty clear and straightforward, and the goal is to, I hope, it allows users to more easily understand what styles mean and what, um, why a certain appearance. Uh, happens uh, right now. But it's just one part of um, the um, uh, trouble. The other is that you not um, clearly know from, uh, from the whole document what happens in, in, the, in all uh, pages. Then you see only the um, uh, style or the attributes at the cursor. You don't get an overview for the full document. The request here is a style indicator and document margin. Um, people request to highlight direct formatting. That's the, the reason to look through all the document. You want to clean up the document and remove all the direct formattings. Maybe you want to see if all the text body style that you want to use, in the uh, example before, the, the thesis text style, if you have applied it to really all the <coughs> paragraphs. And uh, reveal codes is uh, an example from WordPerfect. In a word, um, styles um, 
you want to get an overview and change those styles that you mistakenly applied. That could be done um, later. First of all, uh, I suggest to combine paragraph styles, these uh, left-hand paragraph styles in the sidebar and character styles in sidebar are right now separated into two fuse um, with toggle buttons. Toggle buttons here on top and you have to switch between paragraph style and character style. You don't see what's going on on the other side. The proposal is to combine it into one sidebar, call it text styles, of course show the paragraph styles and the um, uh, character styles uh, together, then as styles, and to expose the hierarchical view as a different kind of um, visualization and not a kind of filter. Right now we have a filter, show the hidden styles, show all applied styles, show only document styles, and so on. Um, it makes not much sense to have um, a way to show it, like the hierarchical uh, mm, view with all the filtering mechanism. That's to uh, expose the hidden and uh, hierarchical view into checkboxes, so you can always switch it on and off, and all the other filter go into the or remain in the drop down. At the bottom, that's the interesting part here. You get one checkbox show the highlight the styles in the document. And that could look like this. Document margin uh, receives a, um, uh, a, a small bar with colored identification of the paragraph. Color corresponds to the um, um, uh, small bar at the paragraph and character styles. And since color is not the only um, um, information or must not be the only information, we add numbers to it. In the example, the tense applied style is, you can or cannot read text body. It has a number 10 and is green, and you can see that uh, the first, the third, fourth, fifth paragraph are uh, formatted as a text body. It's uh, written with 10 here and so on. Now we have the character styles. So far it was uh, known, it's taken from uh, an example is Word on Mac that shows uh, these styles like this. But the, it lacks on character styles. Proposal here is to have a highlighting and a frame around a little bit larger than the actual um, font is to, to visualize that this um, part of the text has a certain character style. Here in this case, the two in front of it, this is a two, corresponds to this two, and the color should be also clearly visible to be yellow, and the emphasize here is orange. And last but not least, we have the direct formatting, Direct formatting here is done as yellow background with direct formatting. So we show um, a gray frame around this uh, part of the text to indicate the direct formatting. By the way, these lens could be also a quite interesting addition if someone is looking for a project sounds to me not too difficult to implement it. And it is very useful to have this uh, such a feature. So, to summarize, uh, Google Summer of Code is coming. It is a proposal to add a, a sidebar, a new deck in the sidebar, show the styles, the attributes from styles in the sidebar, and uh, maybe another project to uh, highlight in the document what is applied. That was my talk. Thank you for listening.
Olivier. Yeah, uh, very interesting uh, suggestions. Uh, thing that comes to my mind is to have a big button to see, to, to click and uh, wipe out all the colors. Because okay. user would, if a user opens the document, all these things called, user can get lost. Document this. Okay. Great It it took me a while to get the idea how to realize it. It is a simple it could be a simple SVG. The, the, the lens itself, this magnifying glass, and this one here is a, a circle, and I put just some screenshot as an, an, a, a bitmap on top of this shape. Yeah. And it's bored, um, uh, everything is there, it, you can do it out of the box, and it should be possible to, uh, to, to have this as a function. So imagine you create a presentation at a lens from, let's say, from somewhere at a lens, and you can move it around, animate it. It is a killer feature against um, PowerPoint. Yeah. Well, I didn't get the point because I thought you were just mentioning the how to zoom to the image, right? You, you mentioning to include this feature within the document itself, so that you can publish documents with the lenses. <coughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, I was, I didn't get the point. There were three steps that I did manually, and it could yeah, be yeah. automated. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So just an idea that uh, came to mind. Uh, Jim this, did these uh, changes to the navigator, mm -hmm. graying out. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. The unused styles. Um, it, today we have the hierarchy is a different kind of view to uh, use styles. If you want to show only the use styles, you don't get a hierarchy. Yeah, yeah, no, you it's, can, it's not a tree. You can change it, but <laughs> because, for example, if you're going to set a font that is uh, non-serif or a different form for complex or action, mm -hmm. that's quite complex to do. So just say this, because maybe the format is there and is not quite visible. But you know how to enable it. You go to Tools Option uh, Language, enable the Asian uh, and uh, CJK uh, yeah. thing, and then you get the opportunity to select it in the in the dialogues. Or am I wrong? <laughs> Maybe I got you wrong. Okay, okay. Is it not something Chinese like right there or something in Hindi? It's difficult to know. Well, it's just 
just this. How okay. to handle this non visible form of this that sometimes is there. And this XMR I see is there. Yeah. Okay. I don't have an answer. Sorry. No, no, <laughs> um, I guess there are many corner cases and uh, we cannot solve everything with simple solutions. There was one point to discuss one uh, was uh, conditional styles. You define some weird condition and you get a different appearance uh, depending on the variable that you set. Then where Hard to imagine that people really use it, but there are so many out and it is being used. Uh, we need some, a way to to show the conditional formatting. I would do it in the simplest way possible to realize it b uh, quicker. One option that comes to my mind is to have uh, just a simple an icon with uh, an information button next to this um, to the attributes that is changed by condition, or so. Just simple solution or ignore it. The majority of users, I believe, benefit from a good feedback of applied styles. Better feedback. Hopefully. Okay. No one else? So, thanks for listening.